Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 3F, where we're going to talk about the proteins that transport small molecules across membranes and the proteins that carry molecules through our bloodstream. First we'll talk about, well, why do we need special proteins to transport things across membranes? And we'll consider one particularly important example of this, the voltage-gated sodium channels that function in sending all the nervous signals that allow you to understand what I'm talking about. And then we'll talk about why we need special carrier storage proteins. And we'll consider two examples, the lipoproteins that carry fat in our blood and ferritin, which carries iron. So first, membrane transport proteins. The gray lines here represent, these gray bands here, represent the two halves of the lipid bilayer membrane that separates the insides of our cells from the outsides of our cells. And this membrane is very good at keeping the insides in and the outsides out. But that's a problem if you need to get stuff in from outside or out from inside. And so cells have evolved ways to do this. But what is needed depends on the kind of molecule. Here's a little GIF animation of the lipids in the membrane bilayer. Each of these blobs is a lipid molecule, a fat, um, with charge on its end. So this end likes to associate with water. And this end likes to associate with water. The middle doesn't like to associate with water at all. But the molecules, like all molecules in the cells, are constantly kind of jiggling around a bit. They're not tied down in exactly the same places. And this jiggling around creates little gaps that lets some molecules pass through the membrane. So molecules that don't like to associate with water, what we call lipophilic molecules, have no trouble going through the membrane. And this includes oxygen and CO2, which are, of course, the things, the things we breathe in, the stuff we breathe out. And it's very important that these molecules be able to move unimpeded. Luckily, they can. Small um, polar molecules that kind of like to hang out with water a little bit water itself and alcohol can also make their way through the membrane, not as efficiently, but at a fast enough rate that water moves in and out of membranes perfectly well. But larger molecules that are charged or have different charges in different parts of them, such as amino acids and sugars and nucleotides, essential molecules for the function of the cell, can't get through the membrane at all. And neither can tiny molecules that are highly charged, ions like hydrogen ions or the two ionized components of salt, which are critical for cell function, can't get through membranes at all. So the body solves this by evolving membrane transport proteins that specifically allow the important kinds of molecules to go in and out. So there are specific transporters for the different kinds of large polar molecules. There are amino acid transport proteins, sugar transport proteins, nucleotide transport proteins, and they all function by creating a special channel in the membrane that allows the molecules that the protein is specialized in to move across the membrane, but doesn't let other molecules leak in and out. The same is true for molecules, proteins, that transport ions across membranes. This is critically important. It's by processing, controlling the transport of ions across membranes is how our brains work, how all the nervous tissues of our body work. And I'll show you an example in the next slide. So many of these ion channel proteins are Gated, and here is an example, gated means that they're not open all the time. They open in response to a particular signal. And when that signal is received, the channel opens and the ions can move across. In many cases, it, they can go either way. So whichever side has too much ions can move to the other side. But when the cellular signal changes, the... Um, channel closes 
and the ions are stuck on one particular side. As I said, this is how our nervous system works. This is how all the signals that allow you to understand what I'm saying, for instance, are transmitted by your brain. And, of course, these are because these are such important proteins, they're also the sites of very important mutations. So there are several hundred distinct mutations that can happen in the genes that code for these voltage-gated sodium channels. And there's certainly more than one gene because these are functioning in different ways in many different kinds of cells. These genes, mutations in these genes, cause inherited forms of epilepsy because the brain is unable to process signals correctly. Now, what about the other kinds of proteins we're talking about? Carrier proteins and storage proteins. Most of these molecules function by reversibly, that is, they can bind and let go, small molecules for storage and transport, especially for transport in the bloodstream. And these molecules control the availability of key supplies to the different parts of the body, and they keep small molecules out of trouble. And you'll see examples of both of these issues in the two examples I'm about to talk about. So the first of these examples are the so-called lipoproteins that transport fats and cholesterol in our bloodstream. Now, all our cells need fats and cholesterol, but most of the fats and cholesterol that we don't get in our diet are synthesized by our liver, and they have to be delivered to all the parts of our body in the bloodstream. But you can't just pop fats and cholesterol into the bloodstream because they have a very high affinity for membranes, for other fats and lipids, and they're going to just join into the first membrane they bump into. So the cell would have the body would have no control over where they were going. So instead, fats and cholesterol are packaged into these balls, and the balls are called lipoproteins. They're really a complex of fat and cholesterol on the inside, and then proteins on the outside um, that control where this little ball of fat is going. They allow the fats to be transported in the bloodstream. And you may have heard of lipoproteins if you, for instance, if you've had your cholesterol tested. Um, cholesterol is synthesized in the liver, and it's thought, although medical opinions are changing, it's thought that the cholesterol that the liver synthesizes helps to cause cholesterol to build up in our arteries, which is creates a problem and can cause heart disease. So when we're tested for cholesterol, you know, sometimes you're told, well, you've got too much bad cholesterol and not enough good cholesterol. Well, the bad cholesterol is assayed by measuring the kinds of lipoproteins that take cholesterol from your liver and deliver it to all the parts of your body. So this is the outgoing cholesterol that your body can potentially use. And when this is high, it suggests that your body is being given too much cholesterol. Now the other kind of cholesterol, what's sometimes called the good cholesterol, is in fact in lipoproteins that are called low-density lipoproteins. And they flow in the other direction. Low-density lipoproteins flow from the body tissues back to the liver, where surplus cholesterol is broken down and discarded. So from the point of view of controlling how much cholesterol gets to your tissues, this is a good thing. The more cholesterol is coming back to the liver for recycling, the better. The, less, the more cholesterol that's going out to the tissues, that's bad. So that's the thinking about lipoproteins. Now, I'm going to tell you about one more kind of transport protein. This is the protein that transports iron in our bloodstream. So I said that um, lipids in our bloodstream can get into trouble because they'll join with the wrong cells, the wrong membranes. Iron in our bloodstream is very important because bacteria 
the, our body controls the behavior of bacteria in, in our, for instance, that might get into our bloodstream by limiting the supply of iron. The body keeps all it, we need iron, our hemoglobin, we absolutely need iron to carry the oxygen in our blood. But we need to keep that iron away from bacteria or the bacteria might be able to grow in our blood. So all the iron that isn't inside cells that's being delivered to the cells that are going to make hemoglobin, all that iron is never allowed to flow freely in the bloodstream. Instead, it's bound tightly to proteins called ferritin. And ferritin proteins, this is one ferritin subunit with iron there and there, ferritin proteins bind tightly to each other and bind all the iron in our bloodstream so that 24 subunits of ferritin joined together form a little ball containing the iron that's being delivered to all of our cells. So what have we done? We talked about proteins needed for transport across membranes and for transport through the body. And we considered the example of sodium channels, which are the way that nerve, nerve signals are transmitted. And these channels are almost always gated. They are open in response to particular signals, closed in response to other signals. That's how we think, among other things. Lipoproteins and ferritin carry important molecules in our blood, both making sure they get to the right destination and keeping them away from all of the wrong destinations. Now, coming up next, we're going to start thinking about regulatory proteins. And we'll start by thinking about the DNA binding proteins that regulate transcription, because this is vitally important for controlling all of the functions of our cells. I hope to see you there.